I don't know, man. Once again, if Thieves if Thieves does buy these guys out, um, once again, I think Thieves has leverage here because the reality is if teams want to make money, they're going to accept a lower price than they necessarily would if they weren't trying to desperately make money. So realistically, I truly think Cloud9 and Ultra have zero leverage here. If I'm Thieves, I would say, listen, we'll take these guys for these number or, we, or you guys can keep them. It's that simple. Obviously, they want to make this roster happen. But Ultra and Cloud9 have no legs to stand on because they're obviously trying to offload big salaries because they don't want to pay them. So Thieves is basically going to be like, if, well, if I was Thieves, I would say, okay, here's the number. And the number would not be super inflated like most people think. I would say, obviously, it has to be reasonable. I mean, you can't be like, okay, here's 50K for Hydra. But I'd offer, in my opinion, what's reasonable. And I'd say, take it or leave it. And if you don't want to sell us these guys, we'll run it back with our roster who just went out to EWC and played great. So I really do think that Ultra and Cloud9 have zero leverage and Thieves have all the leverage. So I think, I think that's kind of, the, kind of the stalemate. And once again, this is still the domino. So every team is still going to wait on these guys to make a move. Scrap salary isn't high for Toronto? Yes, it is, brother. Yes, it is, brother. Is Hydra the most expensive player in the league? Um, well, Shotzi would be the most expensive player, obviously. I mean... Shotzi is the biggest brand in competitive Call of Duty right now as an active player. But, like, when it comes to, like, realistic players that I guess are potentially willing to be offloaded, I guess Hydra would be the most expensive, yeah.